In today's video we're not going to go into a review since I don't have an epic processor or that socket in general to test it out and to see how this one works but it's going to be more like an introduction to give you an idea what's up here to check it out. So today we have Freezer 4U SP5 which comes with two fans and loads of heat pipes and I'm gonna give you some let's say detailed specifications and stuff that you maybe want to know regarding that socket, that uh, cooler and everything all together so let's start. Uh, it's uh, specifically designed for AMD SP5 EPIC processors and it's equipped with two so to say powerful 120 millimeter fans in a push-pull configuration where you have a quite thick passive heatsink in the middle, well basically a single tower, which should ensure an efficient heatsink dissipation. The fans are regulated with PWM connector and one of those two has a Y splitter, so this means that you can actually connect both of them to one PWM uh, header, which kind of eases up the connection part. Now the fans have double ball bearing which basically means uh, particularly low wear and it's ideal for 24-7 workloads. Now the fans have high static pressure and powerful airflow, wide speed range, double ball bearing and compact design. So this means that in those server racks it can fit quite nicely and basically it's designed otherwise it wouldn't make any sense uh, to call it as such for you, right? Now the second revision of the Freezer 4UM was further developed based on the proven predecessor model and offers um, optimized cooling performance not only for the powerful server CPUs from AMD and Intel but also for the ARM processors and Ampera Ultra series as well. Now if we compare Freezer 4UM revision 2 towards the Freezer 4U SP5, the 4UM revision 2, uh, compatibility sockets are Intel LGA4189, 4677, AMD SP6, STR5, SP3, TR4 and Ampere Ultra LGA4926. So the all the multi kits are of were of course available uh, in the box. Now this one is specifically SP5. Thermal resistance for the 4UM revision 2 was 0 0.075 Celsius per watt while this one is 0 0.05 Celsius per watt. The dimensions of this one 124 times 147 times 145 millimeters and the weight is 1512 grams. The noise range goes up to 40 decibels, but to be honest, we're taking uh, into consideration that this CPU cooler is designed for server racks and in server rooms, the noise is unbearable without a doubt, which is quite logical because we have loads of servers there and smaller fans that are running at higher RPMs, which consists of basically just going at 100% trying to get that CPU cooled down and let's not forget industrial ACs that need to cool down either from the bottom of the floor and dissipating it from the ceiling but we're talking about here of some sort of a professional uh, server rooms and uh, very much likely um, very expensive. Warranty is six years and operating ambient temperature is from zero to 40 degrees Celsius. The thermal compound that is included is MX6 0.8 grams and then we were discussing the fans. So we have two 120 PWM fans as I already stated you have a Y splitter on one of those so you only have to connect it once. Fan speed from 300 to 3300 RPMs. Current is 0.29 amperes and the voltage is 12 volts DC. Startup voltage is 3.1 volts DC. Now regarding some information about the heatsink. So we have 62 aluminum fins. Fin thickness uh, is 0.4 millimeters. Direct touch diameter is 6 millimeters times 10. So you have 10 heat pipes. Now additionally what you need to know regarding this one is that uh, it's quite easy to remove the fans. So anything that could go wrong with this cooler, first of all it, it is really heavy. Uh, but uh, when you take into consideration anything that can go wrong here are the fans. So because of the dual ball bearing they should have longevity in terms of working 24-7, right? So how it is to remove them? Sorry for the noise but I have to show you guys. It's really straightforward and simple. You just have to push them, pull them upwards and you get the access to the passive cooler, right? So you can see the heat pipes here at the bottom 
making a direct touch to the CPU and for contact points where you get the Allen wrench inside to tie it up. I mean, this would be a quite heavy. I would definitely suggest grabbing something longer so you can make easier turns regarding the attachment of the cooler towards, uh, towards the CPU. Now, how you place it on the CPU, you basically, of course, remove the bottom foil place the thermal paste and then attach and tie evenly diagonally and evenly uh, all four screws when you do that your cpu towel cooler is standing at the top you can now easily place the fans and that's basically it unfortunately there aren't any name of the fans because they don't produce them individually so this is specifically designed fan for this cpu tower cooler well, basically epic towel cooler. So yeah, this is all that I have simply uh, as it is. It's a uh, 4U, so that means it's suitable for four units. Uh, everything beneath that, it's not possible because 2U is somewhere here. And this is where we have small passive coolers with uh, high, well, not turbines, but uh, high RPM fans that are usually, I think they're 80 millimeters or something like that, right? And they run at 10,000 RPMs, which actually Arctic has those fans as well. So kind of makes uh, sense. But all in all, yeah, quite impressive. Shame I can't test it out and to see how this actually performs. I mean, if I had an epic processor, that would be quite epic. But <laughs> regardless of that, uh, this is something that I wanted to present to you guys and to give you if anybody is actually aiming for or doing some sort of a crazy server thing, this is uh, maybe one of those options that might be good. But regardless of that, as you know, Arctic does produce some high quality and outstanding performing uh, coolers. So I don't have a single doubt on my mind that this wouldn't do the job as well. For you guys that are running an Epic processor at home and you want to run this as well, I'll put the link in the description below so you can check out the price or at least a direct link uh, to Arctic's uh, website so you can check more information there if they uh, placed some more information about it regarding the fans. Well, basically I said literally everything about the fans. So yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell. See you shortly in a new one. Bye-bye.